right hand, state your uh, full name and spell your last for the record. Allison Lane, L-A-N-E. Do you swear or affirm and dependent abide by the testimony of that you may support shall be the truth, the false truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Ms. Lane, thank you. You can take your seat. State may proceed. Yes. 
And uh, when you were assigned to that case, was it already had it already been given a lab number or a case number? Yes. And uh, do you recall what that case number is? I have to refresh my memory. Would it help you to look at the report in this case? Yes. two-page report that I authored for laboratory case number C18-09973. Okay, and that's the case number, obviously, that was assigned to this case? Yes. And after being assigned to this case, uh, what, if anything, did you do next? I obtained the evidence from the vault and began my analysis on the case. Um, and did you, in this case, you had the opportunity to review and examine all the evidence that was submitted? Yes. Now, when you've done the evidence, um, Submitted from the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office, are there any steps that you take to avoid any type of a contamination? The items are worked on in the laboratory in what's called an examination room. Only one case is worked on at a time, and only one piece of evidence is worked on at a time. If there's items of, submitted for analysis from different sources, for instance, if something comes from the victim or comes from the suspect or from a crime scene, they're worked on in separate examination rooms. These rooms are cleaned before and after each case with bleach and ethanol. And then I have to wear a lab coat, hairnet, face mask, safety goggles, and gloves during the analysis. And were all of those steps taken in this case? Yes. Um, now speaking to the examination um, itself, I'm going to draw your attention to lab item 3-1 in this case. Uh, can you tell the jury what 3-1 is? 3-1 is a right shoe. Okay, and that was part of the evidence that was submitted in this case? Yes. Okay, and <clears throat> uh, did you conduct an examination on that item specifically? Yes, I did. And when you examined that item, what were you looking for? I was looking for any potential blood stains. And um, what type of testing did you do on that item? The test in the laboratory is called the Castlemeyer test. It's a presumptive test for blood. Three different reagents are applied to a potential blood stain, and it turns bright pink to indicate that it may be blood. And was that specific KM test done on this item itself? Yes. And what were the results for the defendant's right shoe? I got a positive reaction on a stained area of the right shoe. Um, after receiving the positive reaction for the presence of blood, what did you do? I removed the positive area from the shoe onto a swab from the laboratory. It was dried, and then a portion of that swab was forwarded to the DNA laboratory for further testing. Um, okay, and does the shoe get packaged back up and everything? The shoe is repackaged how I receive it from the submitted agency and returned to the vault. So the only thing that's forwarded is a portion of that swab of the stain that I removed. Um, now turning your attention to 3-3, uh, uh, can you explain the jury what that item is? 3-3 were two shoelaces. And then were they broken down and given individual numbers? Yes. And what were they? 3-3-1 and then 3-3-2. Okay, now looking at, um, well, did you ultimately test both of those items? I did. And what tests did you perform on those items? I did the Castlemeyer test on the uh, shoelaces as well. And what was the result of those items? I got a positive reaction on each shoelace. And after receiving that positive uh, reaction, what did you do then with the shoelaces themselves and with the swabs? The entire shoelaces were swabbed, and then a portion of the swabbing that was positive for the Castlemeyer test was forwarded to the DNA laboratory for further testing, and the shoelaces were repackaged and returned to the evidence, and then returned to the submitted agency. Okay, next, I'd like to turn your attention to item number four. Uh, can you advise the jury what item number four is? A knife. Okay. And um, did you take swabs from this item? Yes, I did. And how many swabs? Two. What, what areas did you swab? The one side of the blade was swabbed, as well as a swab of the handle. Um, and did you perform testing on those swabs? Yes. And what type of testing was performed? I performed the Castlemeyer test, the presumptive test for blood, on both of those swabs. And what was the result, if any? I got a positive reaction on the swabbing of the side of the blade and not detected for the swabbing of the handle. Um, so based on those swabs, just to reiterate, so the positive on the blade means that the Castlemeyer test was positive for the, or for the presence of blood, is that right? The presumptive test for blood, yes. And then, but nothing on the handle itself? Correct. Okay. And what did you do after uh, testing that item specifically? 
A portion of each swabbing was forwarded to DNA for further testing, and then the knife was repackaged and returned to the vault. Um, now, in this case, do you recall the, uh, measuring the blade? I measured it, yes. I do not recall the specific measurements. Would it help you, uh, would it refresh your recollection if you were to see your notes in this matter? Yes. is three page document that is my case notes. These are taken at the time of my analysis during any case, but specifically for this case number C18-09973. Okay, and uh, within your notes now, does that help you with regard to the knife itself and the length of the blade? Does that help you refresh your recollection? Yes. And what was the length of the blade? I measured it as approximately five inches by seven eighths of an inch. to a pair of shorts in this matter. Were the shorts given an item number as well? Yes. And what was that? Item number two. And did you subsequently examine item number two? Yes. And when you examined the article of clothing, again, what were you looking for? I was looking for any potential blood stains. And were you able to identify uh, any potential blood stains on the shorts? I was not. Okay. Um, can you briefly uh, describe to the jury what a reference sample would be? A reference sample is a known sample from an individual. It's used in the DNA laboratory for comparison purposes. And were there reference samples in this case? Yes. And what were they? Who were they from? There was a reference sample from the suspect and a reference sample from the victim. Um, and were these reference samples, um, once you were done your determinations and your testing, were they then also turned over to the DNA laboratory? Yes. testing is to um, retrieve the samples for further testing for DNA 